Greetings, greetings, greetings again. The Spanish laws of Burgos. The origin of the codified foreign laws begin with the 1492 Spanish invasion and conquest of the West Indies in the Americas. The laws were established to govern and restrict the criminal and unlawful behavior of the Spanish settlers slash colonizers slash colonists and their brutal maltreatment of the West Indians slash Aboriginal American Indians. The British came after the Spanish with their own foreign laws and inhumane treatment of us as a people in, 19, in 1655. Our nightmare started with the invasion of the Americas by Portugal, Spain, formerly the Iberian Peninsula in 1492, ordered by the Spanish Catholic King Ferdinand II of Aragon of the Kingdom of Castile after dispossessing the Arab Moors of that country in 1491 and the remaining Moors were expelled by the Spaniards in the 16th century back to North Africa. The laws of Burgos were the first codified set of laws governing the behavior of the Spaniards in the Americas, particularly with, the, with regards to the native indigenous Indians of the America an issue about which the Spanish crown quickly became concerned with soon after the voyage of Christopher Columbus and his governorship. The main laws focused on the welfare of the Indians and it forbid the maltreatment of the indigenous peoples and it endorsed the conversion of Catholicism this is proof that the invaded nation of Spain was not Arab, Muslim, or Mohammedan Moors, but Catholic Christians from the north that defeat the Arabs, then moving west. The laws of Burgos were created following the conquest of the conquest and Spanish colonization of the Americas in the West Indies, or of the West Indies in the Americas, I'll have to fix up that, where the common law of Castile was not fully applicable. The scope of the law was originally restricted to the island of Hispaniola, originally Haiti, but later extended to Puerto Rico and Jamaica. The laws of Burgos authorize and legalize the colonial practice of creating encomendas, encomendas, where Indians were grouped together to work under a colonial head of state for a salary. Now, people, when we are used the term Indian here, it referred to the Negro or the Negroid class of people or the populace, those who are now being classified as black or Negro or colored or African American or West Africans or even Maroons. These were originally Indians. Indians were grouped together to work under a social, under a colonial head of state, head of the estate for a salary. The very same thing I'm going now. They also established a minutely regulated regime of work, pay, provisioning, 
live in quarters, hygiene, and care for the Indians in a reasonably protective humanitarian spirit. Women more than four months pregnant were exempt from work. The document also prohibited the use of any form of punishment by the encomendias, reserving it for officials established in each town for the implementation of the laws. The law also ordered the Indians catechized and outlawed bigamy. So here we are talking about the laws of Burgos deriving from Spain. And from that time, early 1500, when these foreign colonists came here, they had to outlaw bigamy. But obviously, these colonists, foreigners, were not just raping our women. They were actually sodomizing our men, folk. So this is why these laws were implemented, established, and instituted here on the island to restrict the foreigners. Now, after 18, after 1508, the friar, after the monks, the friars made the case to defend the American Indians from becoming serf or slave of the new colonies. Laws of Burgos in Bur Burgos on the 27th of December 1512 were a set of new laws to protect the rights of the native West Indians of the Americas called the New World by the foreign nations. 35 new laws were put into effect to secure the freedom of the indigenous peoples of the America and to enforce Indian reduction governing conversions so them really they don't convert the people from whatever paganism they are presuming to their form of christianity their form of catholicism in 1542 new revised laws issued by carlos the first such as the right of the indigenous peoples and the laws of the indies to encompass the papal bull and all edicts now when you talk about the united declaration on indigenous people here we are present from the 1542 from 1542 by a guy named carlos the first as promulgated the right of the indigenous people way before these new construct are prescribed these things so nothing is new under the sun we just have to be astute and apply ourselves to ascertain the foundation of these things so we said call us the first and a the rights of the indigenous people and the laws of the Indies to encompass the papal bulls, meaning including the papal bull and all of those Catholic edicts that was from before. Then quickly revised again in 1552 after the laws met resistance from the Spanish colonists, these very colonial bastards, the actual people that came on the land these are the ones that give in all the problems so their crown had to implement laws and rules for them yeah man. the missionary friars preached to the spanish colonists that they were sinning and do not have the right to force the indians to serve them claiming they should only be converted to Catholic Christianity. So, you know, when people talk about law, especially here on the island, our judiciary, which is the legitimate area of law, we now talk about the administrative procedural garbage, which is which are really slave courts. 
but the, the judiciary totally ignore all of what's going on, totally is in, inefficient or incompetent or just plain sell out because you have a oath of office, their oath of allegiance, their official oath. All public officers, official oath of allegiance is to the constitution, to uphold the constitution and the laws of such. And their obligation is to the people within their oath. They must say them have to care of the people, secure the people, protect the people, not property not institutions, not politicians. However, these people purge their oath of office and they have descended to the office of profit where it's all a commercial business or enterprise. So no longer these people, you know, choose to uphold the oath what I'm tech to secure the people. Matter of fact, we probably can't show a few of these quotes. Let me read down here. The ordinance of discovery in 1573, which forbid any unauthorized act, actions, or operation against independent Aboriginal American Indians. These are the ordinance of discoveries. This is 1573. People don't have highlight these things. People don't talk about these things. Throughout the 400 years of Spanish presence in the America, laws were compiled several times, most notably in 1680 under Charles II in the compilation of the kingdoms of the lost indeeds. How much people have this kind of information? The Voile Dole debate, 1550 to 1551, was the first moral debate in European history to discuss the rights and the treatment of the colonized people by the colonizers. So this moral discussion, moral debate, the very first instance when they might come together with a conscience for Seboa would decimate with genocide, with corrupt and pollute the Americas and the peoples of the Americas. But then just choose to discuss these things in 1550 and 1551. However, now is 2022. Has the situation changed? No. However, we do give thanks for the free expression. So again, people would just share information for my people know say so when everybody had talked about the British and the British law. No, the Spanish came here first. The very first codify foreign laws was instituted and established by the Spanish Crown. And these laws were in place to govern and restrict the criminal and unlawful behavior of the Spanish settlers, colonizers, and colonists, and their brutal maltreatment of the West Indians. The British came after in 1655 and did the very same thing. This is why you have a Bill of Rights, because even on the mainland, the very same British people came to the mainland and slaved our people here on the mainland and when the crown established laws to restrict their conduct, they claim independence from the crown. 1766, this is when they officially organize themselves and start their enslavement of the Americas. And not until the Bill of Rights, which gave people individual rights, the rights of the individual, 
That's when I will leave a thing. Shame. This is why I would say, you know, ignorance, you know, is an obstacle that can only be removed with application and knowledge, put it that way. So we we'll just bring forth this information for, you know, share with the people, sir, irrespective of what is going on. Yeah, man, the half has not yet completely been told. Yeah, man, only for other things are going on there. Yeah. And a quote like this is necessary for share with our people. What we say, our eyes are useless if the heart is silent and the mind is blind. I'll repeat that. Our eyes are useless if the heart is silent and the mind is blind. Again, through my light law, I'm going to say, apparently, law is whatever we consent to. The contract is the agreement that makes law. So whatever you consent to, that becomes law. And since I'm here, let me just touch on this. Because some of our, you know, say, political agents acting in the capacity as government. I'm totally not have no interest in a honorable clarification or truth so we have said the right of the individuals are not derived from governmental agencies either municipal state or federal or even from the constitution itself the individual's right exists inherently in every man by endowment of the creator and are merely reaffirmation in the Congress Constitution. So the Constitution under reaffirm our inherent right that was endowed to us by the Creator. The Constitution cannot give us any rights. What it can do is guarantee and secure those rights by contract. This is why we say the Constitution is an enforceable contract. And the instrument of the contract usually is the oath. Yeah, man, individual rights exist inherently in every man by endowment of the Creator and are merely reaffirmed in the constitution and restricted only to the extent that they have been voluntarily surrendered by the citizenship to the agency of government so you by you surrendering voluntarily choose to partake participate in the citizen writ saying you're a jamaican citizen then this is where the restriction come in. This is why they now tell you about chapter three, fundamental rights and freedom within the construct. Yeah, within the constitution, within the construct, within the contract. Chapter three is where you find the binding contract because charter is synonymous with covenant, contract, or agreement. So so the people's right are not derived from the government, but the government's authority comes from the people. People know that. The people's rights are not derived from the government, but the government's authority 
derive from the people. The individual owes no duty to the state since he received nothing therefrom beyond the protection of his life and property, which is guaranteed within the contract, the constitution. His rights are such as existed by the law of the land long antecedent to the organization of the states. So when them say the law of the land, they might talk about the common law of the land, the constitution. He owes nothing to the public so long as he does not trespass upon their rights. So this is for clarity. Yeah, man, for some of these public servants out there who are totally unaware of the limitation that is placed upon their action and conduct. But when we place a commercial lien against one of these individuals, it should set precedent. And that's why we choose to always give notice. Because notice is the practice of good faith. Anyway, give thanks and praise. Right now, everything down, so I have fair work, you know, from a location outside of my home, I actually there in the library, I put in some work. Uh, this is how the thing kind of scale right down. But again, we don't necessarily complain about what is. You know what I mean? What we do, we just find solutions to whatever problem will manifest itself. So again, we say give thanks to the brave may fall, but never yield and we say bold and brave. Firm and strong. Yeah, man. Salute out there. Arawak, Arawak Indians. This is who we are. We are no Maroons. This is who I'm a bun, the cross dressing entertainer, sissies. We are promote the gay Maroon agenda. We have some unqualified people. Show them an entertainer with some foreign contract, think them credible to speak out here. Most of you broken people, some of you, you know, get molested, get spoiled from a child. I don't know how to come now and act like when I can present anything suitable for people that is unspoiled, people that is unpolluted, uncorrupted. Uno can't talk to we. Uno have to talk to fool own kind out there. That's why we burn them. Yeah, man. It's a sizzler there. We have to say, salute, sizzler. We can't talk about yesterday. I man see the work where you are doing now. So if I just, for just the entertainment factor, we love it. Burn them to them poor. Your immoral, lascivious lifestyle. You keep that in your house. You keep that private winner response. This is why I now have a problem with the gay. You know, the sodomite out there. Why? God, I mean, I feel them well. But when I not try to impose these immoral conduct upon society, then we have to say, no, we have to protest. You want to be a sissy, go ahead and be a sissy. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Do that in your house. The sodomite girl not to come out here and promote them sodomy. Need a body boy. We have laws against those things. And now, the new demonic system that is in place, I look for rearrange these things. Remember, you know, you're free to do what you want to do inside of your own house. Not bring it out at the public with a decapitate you. Because children are not supposed to be exposed to these things. Period. Yeah, man. When you're grown and adult, then you choose your lifestyle and suffer the consequence fee. But you can't come tell people about same sex when that is not conducive to nature. This is why we serve nature's. God, 
natural laws. Yeah. If it's not conducive to nature, then we never support it. If it's not match up, if it's not flow, then we leave it. It's simple. However, step by step, people. Give thanks out there. Yeah, man. Give thanks out there.